But the more important part is what I'll say here. Prices fall forever. So relative to Bitcoin, your $43 million uh, purchasing power and terminal value today buys more and more forever um, because prices will fall relative to it for, uh, forever. So as a ge general case, if you just say, how much do I own of the ledger, the 900 trillion? Hey guys, welcome back to Everyday Finance. In this video, Jeff Booth discusses Bitcoin and crypto. Jeff Booth explores the question of whether Bitcoin can function as a store of value, a currency, or perhaps even both. Additionally, he delves into the potential competition for energy between Bitcoin and AAI and investors in the company, and lots of things Jeff Booth discusses. So please watch the video to end and like, share this video, and subscribe our channel Everyday Finance. Thanks. Thanks. So just take AI as an invention by us created to serve us. It's a tool. Um, and it's a free market tool that gets better and better over time. And relative to Bitcoin, it means all prices are falling faster to the marginal cost of production. Relative to the other system, you're going to see prices, they have to climb and, and they have to, and, and as they climb, there, there is no free market when money is manipulated at this rate. So, because the money is so, so that means, and I, I you know, I'm going to back up because this is so important. Just keep saying like over and over and over again, the natural state of the free market is deflation. And once you understand that, then you understand everything else is stopping it. And if you think your prices are going up and if you think this politician and this is going to be growth, like listen to politicians talk about growth today. They're talking about their productivity growth is faster deflation. So what they're actually talking about is we're going to manipulate money faster to steal more money from you. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, they're not talking about growth at all. So just keep going. The natural state of the free market is deflation. Then everything that stops it is, a, is not a political system. It's not an economic system. It's a control system. And it's so critical. Now why that's important in AI is as AI moves faster and faster, which it inevitably will um, exponentially, um, and it merges with robot, ro uh, robots that can do anything that, um, that you can do way better, faster. The business that hires that, uh, that bring, brings in robots, that you say you won't use because they're removing labor, you will use because it's cheaper for you. You will use it. And if the business doesn't use that, they will go broke because you will choose differently. So if your choices are driving this to lower and lower prices, shouldn't you benefit in an economic system that, that is, is repricing that and sharing that abundance with all, all people on earth? That's what Bitcoin is doing. So Bitcoin is, and it just, if you just took, kind of $900 trillion balance sheet, which is the world's balance sheet today. And there's 21 million Bitcoin. Then the implied value, as long as it stays decentralized and secure of Bitcoin is about $43 million per Bitcoin today. But that $900 trillion, because you just 900 trillion divided by 21 million, million, all it has to do is stay decentralized and secure for in time that to be true is it's repricing the other system. But $900 trillion balance sheet today has $400 trillion of debt against it. And that debt is already insolvent. And if it, what, if it was actually marked to market, the balance sheet of the world wouldn't be $900 trillion. You'd have a cascading cl collapse, all real estate prices, banks would fail, everything would collapse. Mm -hmm. So the only reason it's $900 trillion, essentially what you're measuring the world through and you're part of that ledger, the only reason it's $900 trillion is because you think the debt is solvent and you will vote for somebody who manipulates money unless instead of allowing a, cla uh, a, a collapse. What does that mean? That means probably four or five years from now, the $900 trillion balance sheet won't be $900 trillion. It would be two quadrillion. And then if, if Bitcoin versus that balance sheet and the cost of living from there was 90 million terminal value of Bitcoin, it would be the same purchasing power. Right. But the more important part is what I'll say here. Prices fall forever. 
So relative to Bitcoin, your $43 million uh, purchasing power and terminal value today buys more and more forever. Um, because prices will fall relative to it for uh, forever. So as a ge general case, if you just say, how much do I own of the ledger, the 900 trillion <clears throat> today, and make sure you own at least that in, Bit in, in Bitcoin. And then start, and as you start to understand this more, you start to understand what's happening, start to move some of your time from the system that's co-opting your attention to the system that's uniting people and, and building to truth, hope, and abundance. And you'll find yourself more happier as you do that because it's consistent where we are going as a society. As per a report from asset manager ARK Invest, it was noted on July 18th that Bitcoin experienced an oversold condition in June, following Germany's the government recently sold off a large amount of Bitcoin that was seized in a police operation against Movie 2, a streaming platform known for pirated content. This sell-off caused Bitcoin prices to drop from their peak of over $70,000 in early June, to a low of under $55,000 during a temporary dip in July. The decrease in prices was influenced by short-term holders cashing in their profits. SL miner outflows resulted in losses. Based on the report, it seems that Bitcoin is showing signs of being oversold. The report covers the period up until June 30th, but also includes more recent data. At present, the recent decrease in outflows indicates that miners are giving up, which could be a sign of a positive turnaround. Additionally, the consistent demand for BTC exchange traded funds ETFs, from investors has also been seen as a positive indicator, as noted by ARK. The report highlighted that the sharp sell-off of BTC did not cause a widespread panic. There has been a significant exodus from the spot BTCTTF as of June 30th. The drop in BTC spot price has caused a noticeable decrease in BTCF flows, with a 30-day percentage change of 17.3% in July. There has been a significant influx of money into BTCF, with around $1.35 billion flowing into the funds during the week ending July 15th. As reported by CoinShares, Dark Roy Shares, according to Thomas Ferrer, co-founder of the crypto data platform iBit, the Bitcoin Trust saw a significant increase in inflows on July 18th, amounting to $17 million. This surge in inflows comes after a consistent streak of nine consecutive days of positive inflows. One potential risk to BTC's ongoing strong performance is the state of global economic data. Corporate profits are consistently declining, indicating a weakening economy as pricing power diminishes, as noted by RK Bitcoin prices also encounter. There may be some challenges ahead due to the closure of a cryptocurrency exchange, but financial analysts suggest that the repayment of $9 billion in BTC to creditors could help mitigate the impact. Unlike Germany's sudden sell-off, creditors may choose to hold on to BTC, which could soften any potential effects on the broader market, according to industry experts. Let's get back to Jeff Booth interview. Let's get back to Jeff Booth. Yeah, and, and, and this this is real. So think about Bitcoin as from energy perspective like this. Um, uh, so we, you know, I know that Bitcoin's bounded by energy. Create, mm -hmm. And it creates more abundant energy by being there. And why? Because it provi provides a free market source for energy. So you use, an, use this example. You run a bakery. Um, every day you throw the extra bread at the end of the day. I come in at the end of the day and I uh, end one day and I say, I'm going to buy everything you, you can produce, but I want a discount. The very next day you produce double as much and you hope I show up. Then I buy it. Then I show up and I buy it all. The next day you buy 10 times, you create 10 times more bread. Um, I buy it all. Next day, 100 times more bread. I buy it all. And so as a buyer of a last buyer of economic store, then I've, I've put a floor price on your bread, right? And I will always buy more. So it allows you to expand capability to be able to create abundant bread. That is what Bitcoin is doing in energy. So it's creating mm -hmm. abundant energy. What's happening is these these 
this abundant energy that always has to be cheaper, more, uh, 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 and lower cost because the free market wants better and better, lower and lower, lower cost for their economic gain. It decentralizes energy all over the world because it, uh, it, instead of a capital cost that doesn't have a base buyer, right? If you're building an energy, uh, energy plant, you now have somebody that will always buy anything extra in production. So mm -hmm. you would, of course, integrate Bitcoin into energy produ production, and that's now distributing energy all over the world and creating abundant energy. And on the other side, as we use that, the world is crazy short energy. So, but there's abundant energy on this on this planet. It's just an economic way to gain get, gain energy. And so now we have an economic model to gain energy that also that, that creates this this rail to Bitcoin that is essentially bounded by energy, decentralizes it all over the, uh, all, all over the world. And then you have, uh, you have, uh, AI, which is a high resource, high intensity energy, uh, usage that comes in and follows it on, on behind. Um, now you go in the geopol geopolitical angle about energy, right? Or sorry, energy and AI is, mm -hmm. is every country is going to want their AI, AI models in their country. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have, you, you're not going to want China uh, or China citizens aren't going to want their, theirs in, in databases in the U S and vice versa. And this is going, so as is Bitcoin decentralizes energy all over the world in behind that, you're going to decentralize AI. Wow. So this is what in, in core scientific, this is essentially the strategy that they, uh, that we laid out and they, and, and the team is incredible in creating this, uh, in, in this strategy. And you, if you've seen the stock performance of, of, of it, it's just as a simple part of this strategy, they own their energy infrastructure because they're, they understand, and they always have understood how Bitcoin mining is synonymous with energy. The transition from a government in the United Kingdom run by the conservative party. It seems that there is speculation about what actions Prime Minister Kerr Starmer may take regarding the UK government's Bitcoin holdings. According to data from crypto intelligence platform Arkham, the government currently holds approximately 61,245 Bitcoin, valued at over $4 billion as of July 19th. As the newly appointed UK Chancellor, it is highly probable that Reeves has the authority to distribute the funds, which were previously confiscated in a money laundering investigation involving John Wen, a hospitality worker. However, there might be certain administrative obstacles that need to be addressed. Reeves might consider liquidating the Bitcoin holdings as a potential strategy to support the Labour government's efforts in fostering economic stability and growth. On July 17th, King Charles Russian delivered a policy statement that emphasized the importance of prioritizing the construction of affordable housing and the improvement of the nation's rail system. This address highlighted the need for Labour to focus on these key areas for the betterment of the country. Prime Minister Starmer has not made any public statements regarding crypto as a Labour policy objective. However, his government recently introduced 40 bills on July 17th as part of the King's speech. Starmer, who previously served as Shadow City Minister and Shadow Economic Secretary, was active in these roles leading up to the July election. CID indicated a strong intention to tighten regulations on cryptocurrencies, backed by a substantial amount of 61,000 BTC. The UK possesses a substantial amount of Bitcoin in its stockpile ranking second only to the United States among world governments. The German government sold off its 49,858 BTC holdings through multiple transactions in June and July, generating approximately $2.8 billion. It remains uncertain how Germany plans to utilize the funds. Timing plays a crucial role in the crypto space, as it can greatly influence when Reeves decides to sell. Analysts have pointed out that the period leading up to the U.S. presidential election could be favorable for crypto markets. However, the release of previously frozen BTC holdings at Emma Cox could also potentially lead to a decline in the price of Bitcoin. If you learned something from this video, 
then please like this video and subscribe our channel Everyday Finance. And we will meet in next video. Thanks.